Good morning, everybody. This is Clint Arthur, and I am going to be writing a book right now. This, this Facebook Live is going to be part of my new book writing strategy that I'm developing right now. And it is six, shortly eight, like six, six something in the morning right now. I'm not exactly sure. And I'm in Clearwater, Florida. See, it's so early, there's not even anybody at the pool. The pool staff is cleaning the pool right now. That's how early it is. There's not a soul down here. So Hal Elrod would be proud of me. I think I'm... trying to embody the miracle morning and trying to make a miracle happen this morning. The miracle that I'm going to create today is I'm going to create this book and make it a best-selling book today. I'm going to create it entirely from its beginning all the way to the end, publishing it live on Amazon as a Kindle book by the end of today. And the goal is to make it a best-selling book by the end of today. Not a, not a soul at the pool, as you can see. So, despite the fact that there's this sign that says stingrays are swimming in the area, I'm gonna brave this whole situation, and I'm gonna take you down to the beach here in Clearwater for the sunrise. Hopefully I won't get too, too much sun on this experience. And the other part that's gonna be really cool is that Right now, Bitcoin is at $10,950 per Bitcoin. And it'll be fascinating to see how much money I quote unquote make by the end of this walk slash adventure slash entrepreneur's adventure slash entrepreneurial marketing discussion slash book creation experience slash best-selling book campaign slash entrepreneurial marketing living legends adventure what I will be talking about in this experience that you're going on with me is Martha Stewart and iced tea and cocoa and Jerry Greenfield who is Jerry from Ben and Jerry's ice cream and my great mentor Dan Kennedy another great mentor Michael E. Gerber author of the multi-year New York Times best-selling book The E-Myth Dylan Howard, Editor-in-Chief of the National Enquirer, Us Magazine, OK, Men's, Men's Health, Soap Opera Digest. He is the Chief Content Creator for all of the American Media Inc. publications and their associated websites. I don't know anybody who is in charge of as much content going out into the world and attracting as many eyeballs as Dylan Howard, a young man who has just dominated, dominated his industry and is a massively talented and successful content creator. Then I'm going to talk about the smartest man in the world. His name is Walter O'Brien. When he was 13 years old, he hacked into NASA. The CIA raided his Irish farmhouse with a whole bunch of military choppers and took him away. And he became an elite problem solver for the FBI, the CIA, and rich corporations who pay him big, big money 
to solve problems, his company's motto, any funded problem. Revise that, that's any funded need. Then I'm gonna talk about a fascinating individual named Steve Larson. Steve Larson made more than 500 funnels for Russell Brunson at ClickFunnels. Going out here, hardly anybody on the beach. Is this the miracle morning? Moon is still out, see it? Steve Larson made more than 500 funnels for Russell Brunson and ClickFunnels. If anybody knows what it takes to make a successful money-making funnel, I think that would probably be Stevie O. Larson. He also hosts an incredible event called OfferMind. He knows, see, a funnel is all about an offer and then a conversion mechanism. And this guy knows all about offers and funnels and conversion and all of it. I'm going to talk about him after that. And then I'm going to talk about my delightful, beautiful, super smart, amazing protege, Her Royal Highness Princess Marianne Parker, who came to this country seeking the American dream. Six months later, she was in a homeless shelter with her toddlers seeking refuge from domestic violence. And since that time, she has become a luxury etiquette expert. Running events featuring McLaren and Rolls Royce and Bentley and Lamborghinis. Living legend that she is, she's really become royalty in her industry. And then, not, not last and not least, I will talk about my other great protege. I have several great protégés, but I'm, in this project, I'm gonna talk about these two protégés. And the second one is Hal Elrod, author of The Miracle Morning. Wow, here's a sea turtle nest. Look at that. That is so cool. Violators subject to fines and imprisonment. There's, there are these nests all along the beach up here. Fantastic. Hal Elrod, creator of The Miracle Morning. I did an interview with Hal last week and he told me personally that he has sold more than 1.5 million books of his Miracle Morning title. And he previously told me on another podcast interview that I did with him, you can see it on my website, clintarthur.tv, in the testimonials. You can see it on guaranteedcelebrity.com, on the case studies page, that he gets $8 a book royalty. You do the math, my friends. And when Hal Elrod came to me and signed up for Celebrity Launchpad, I signed him up over the phone. Next day, he calls me up. And he goes, hey, man, Clint, I uh, talked it over with my wife. And then we realized we just can't afford to go to Celebrity Launchpad. I, I really appreciate it, but I, I just can't afford it. I'm like, no, Hal, you are coming to Celebrity Launchpad. Instead of this one payment, at that time, my class was $3,600. Instead of that, we're going to make it a little bit more. And you're going to do a monthly installment that you can afford that meets your budgetary needs and we made it happen for him and he came to Celebrity Launchpad and booked 13 TV appearances with my friends at ABC, NBC, CBS and Fox the amazing producers who produce television every single day attracting eyeballs for their living every day and they featured him on shows all across this country and that helped to propel his book to the magnificent international self-publishing phenomenon that it is today. Now he has a whole 
series of Miracle Morning spin-offs like Chicken Soup for the Soul has a whole bunch of books like Chicken Soup for the Mom Soul, Chicken Soup for the Dad Soul, Chicken Soup for the Alcoholic Soul, Real Estate Broker Soul. He's got his own Chicken Soup franchise boiling and simmering on the stove of the, entre- of the entrepreneurial endeavor that is known as the Miracle Morning. And I'm very, very proud of him. I'm going to talk about him in a minute. And then last but not least, I will talk about my own endeavors. Yes, I will fill you in on exactly what I am doing in this project, this best-selling book in a day campaign that I am doing using Facebook Live. I believe I am the first person ever to generate a book out of a Facebook Live broadcast and then create it into and transform it into a bestseller all in one day. That's what's going to happen today. By the end of today, you will see this book, Entrepreneurial Marketing, with Martha Stewart, Ice-T and Coco, Jerry Greenfield, Dan Kennedy, Michael Gerber, Dylan Howard, Walter O'Brien, Princess Marianne Parker, Hal Elrod, Steve Larson and Clint Arthur on Amazon.com live and I want you to buy it, okay? I'm gonna make it only, I'm gonna make it as cheap as they'll allow me to make it. I think it's now $1.99 is the cheapest you can make it. it used to be 99 cents, now it's $1.99 and I will price it there and I'm asking you please to buy it because this is a project I'm doing and you're part of the project. And I need your help. And I also want you to see exactly what I do, how I'm transforming this Facebook Live into a best selling book in a day. That's the goal. I don't know anybody who's done this. And you're going to see it happen today. And you're going to see the, the process right now. Let's get into it. Now, I started writing books, man, when I was a little kid, I started writing books. I wrote my first novel when I was 19 years old. Thank you, John. Because I studied creative writing with a gentleman by the name of Frank McCord. Perhaps you've read his book, Angela's Ashes, it won the Pulitzer Prize story of his impoverished childhood in Ireland. He used to work out those stories on us, his students, in his classroom at Stuyvesant High School, where I was a top student and then went on to a stellar career at the Wharton Business School. And Even as an undergraduate at Wharton, I wrote a novel because I'm a writer. See, I'm a writer. I am a writer. At my heart and soul, at the base of it all, I'm a writer. And I think I'm a writer because I have all the control. When you're a writer, you just write what you want and nobody can really say anything unless you work for a big publishing company. And I have had books published by Penguin USA I had the big book of the summer of 1995 that I personally wrote during 1994, no, 1993 I wrote that book and it became the big book of their summer of 1995. And next thing I knew in 1995, I started driving a taxi. Here I was, I mean, think about the irony of it all. In the summer of 1995, my book was the number one major release of Penguin USA, and that's exactly when I started driving a taxi. It's true. I had just had a baby in May of 2000. Uh, In May of 1995, I had a baby girl named Callie. And right at that exact 
same time, I had no more money left because I had maxed out all my credit cards, taking her mom out to dinners during the pregnancy. And I'm not saying her mom wanted me to take her places that were like super fancy. We would go to, I think it was called Mel's Drive-In on Sunset Boulevard in LA. The woman was pregnant. I loved her. I spent every last penny I had supporting her. And paying for the house she wanted to live in. In the Hollywood Hills. And by May of that year when the baby was born, I had no more available credit left. On any of my credit cards. And I was talking to my friend, Charles Sherman, who is a great entrepreneurial marketer himself, earning a very comfortable and successful living as a fine artist, selling his paintings, sculptures, and fine art jewelry, and taking home a lot of money every year, partially, with my help over the last few years, having done my Income Doubler program, which is a thousand dollar book you can buy here on Amazon, having talked to me many, many times about pricing strategies and marketing campaigns and initiatives. And so with my book, in every bookstore in America, I started driving a taxi. And I drove that taxi for years. Fast forward all the way to December 31st, 1999. Where were you? Were you getting your Y2K cash out of an ATM? I was behind the wheel of yellow cab number 6087 on New Year's Eve of the millennium. And in the back seat of my cab were these two guys who were MBA interns at Goldman Sachs. And I'm listening in on their conversation, of course. Hey, did you hear about Mr. Carrera? They made him the last partner right before the Goldman IPO and he cashed out a gazillion dollars. I turned around and craned my neck into the back seat. Hey, you guys talking about Chris Carrera? How do you know Mr. Carrera? Chris Carrera was a pledge in my fraternity. When I used to be the pledge master, of the castle, I used to make those little punk pledges dance around the living room of the house with their tidy whities on top of their heads. And now, Chris Carrera cashed out a gazillion dollars? I went home to my boat in Marina Del Rey, where I had been living since Callie's mom kicked me out. I had a little sailboat. It's not as glamorous as it might sound. It was mine though. All 150 feet of interior living space was mine. And huddled up under my down comforter that night, wearing all my clothes, because it was January 1st, 2000, and it was freezing on the boat. I counted my cash. $513. I wonder where Chris Carrera was tonight, huh? Partying at the Rainbow Room. I was supposed to be somebody special. Have you ever felt like you were in a ditch you were never gonna be able to climb out of? That's where I was. My resume had one line item. 
Yellow Cab Company. In 2000, I was 35 years old. I was born in 1965. In the year 2000, I was 35 years old and I had a line, I had a resume with one line item. How the hell was I ever gonna turn that around? How was I ever going to become successful and have a real life? That night, I transformed my pillow into a sponge. And I swore an oath to myself that I was gonna do everything I possibly could to change who I am and how I was showing up in this world. And the first thing I did was I took all of my screenplays that I had written. I wrote 30 screenplays over my 13 year adventure chasing the Hollywood dream. And I took them out on the dock and I went up to the dumpster up by the building next to the dock and I tossed him in the dumpster and I set the freaking dumpster on fire. I am never gonna write again, is what I swore to myself that day. Never again. And I did not write a word for years. What did I do in the interim period of time to turn it around? Those of you who have Googled me see that I am no longer a taxi driver. I am quite successful as an entrepreneur. I have many, many number one best-selling books, including what they teach you at the Wharton Business School, the last year of your life, the greatest book of all time, which I will talk about later on here. It's very important in my whole career. and my latest book, Celebrity Entrepreneurship. All of which are amazing books. Bestsellers. <sighs> Starting to get the sun coming up now. Right over there. I wonder how much Bitcoin is now. <laughs> if anybody wants to give me real-time updates on Bitcoin, I'd be interested. What did I do in those years to turn it all around? The first thing I did was I realized smartly, somehow I was smart enough to realize there it is, coming up. Somehow I was smart enough to realize that the problem here was me. I was not showing up in a way that was transforming me into somebody special, somebody who was killing it, making a lot of money, the way I am now. I was the problem. And the smartest thing that I did was I took action to rectify that problem. I realized if I was the problem, then I had to change. And I started taking every single self-help course that I could get my hands on, starting with stuff that I did at the Learning Annex. That was a great little organization they used to publish catalogs, and those catalogs were full of courses that you could take to improve your life and who you were and how you showed up in the world. And I started taking all kinds of those seminars, one of which was particularly helpful to me was called Life Transformation with a man named Paul Roth, who became my very first business coach. 
And I remember in those days, Paul Roth said to me, are you happy, Clint? I said, yeah, I'm happy. After about, oh, four months of coaching in his life transformation program, I was starting to see progress. I had started a little side business selling butter. I actually created the first raw butter commercial product in the US and was selling it through the raw food co-op in Los Angeles called Rossum. And I was making about $250 a week cash on the side doing that. I had a beautiful and sexy Tantra goddess girlfriend. Yeah. And you know, that could be a a euphemism, Tantra goddess. I know in my case, I believe that my Tantra goddess was using that, that phrase as a euphemism. But I'll tell you what, she was very, very sexy. Man, she and I used to have great times, partying, drinking wine, eating great food. So I said, yeah, Paul, I'm happy. And Paul Roth looks at me and he says, you don't know the meaning of the word happy. (laughs) He was right. I did not know the meaning of the word happy. I knew what hedonism was. I knew what it was to drink and drug yourself into numbness and hide yourself in nights full of sexual debauchery. I knew that. And it was a lot of fun. But from where I stand today, and specifically I remember last year floating in the ocean with my wife of 17 years, not the Tantra goddess, by the way, off the coast of our five-star luxury hotel, the Royal Hawaiian in Honolulu, Waikiki Beach, where we ensconced ourselves for the whole summer last year in a one bedroom suite. I have learned to appreciate that happiness is different than fun. There are a lot of elements that go into happiness. And I lead a very different life today. I do have a lot of fun, different kinds of fun than I used to have for the most part. But now I've been clean and sober of off alcohol and drugs and everything for more than five years. I quit smoking pot almost 10 years ago. And I have found a great deal of happiness. What's in here? This is some kind of a uh, lobster trap or something. And the source of my happiness, really, the base, the foundation of all my happiness comes from entrepreneurial marketing. Entrepreneurial marketing provides me the fantastic lifestyle and resources that I have today that I enjoy so much. 
it provides the structure for my life of luxury where I basically live in five-star resorts, hang out with very smart, successful, educated experts from around the world, helping them to fulfill their dreams and in the process, building my own dreams. And it has provided me most of all the most valuable thing anybody could hope to achieve on this earth and that is a genuine education and understanding of how the world works, what is truly valuable, what motivates people, and how to achieve your dreams. That's what entrepreneurial marketing is really, really, truly all about. Making your dreams come true. And in the rest of this book, I'm gonna talk about how Martha Stewart and Ice-T and Coco and Jerry Greenfield and Dan Kennedy and Michael Gerber and Dylan Howard from the National Enquirer and Hal Elrod, the Miracle Morning author and movement creator and Princess Marianne Parker and Walter O'Brien, the smartest man in the world and Steve Larson and I are all using entrepreneurial marketing to make our dreams come true, to live the lives that we create for ourselves and to help others to achieve their dreams too. To quote the great Zig Ziglar, you can get anything you want in this world if you help enough people to get what they want. Entrepreneurial marketing is the power that drives it all. Chapter one, Dan Kennedy. I want to start with Dan Kennedy because he truly is the foundation of my entrepreneurial marketing knowledge innovation and success. I first heard about Dan Kennedy when I attended a seminar in Las Vegas, which was called Big Money Speaker Secrets Revealed. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, at one time there was a recurring seminar called Big Money Speaker Secrets Revealed, hosted by a young man who was a very successful speaker and coach for entrepreneurs named James Malinchak. And James Malinchak repeatedly talked about his mentor, Dan Kennedy. I'm an interesting kind of person. I'm not always content with what people show me. A lot of people will buy what you put in front of them. I honestly believe most people will buy what you put in front of them if you can motivate them emotionally and make it make sense logically and justify the price in some way in front of them. That's part of that logic so that they feel like your emotional solution to their emotional need makes sense and seems fair and they'll buy it. One of the products he offered that day was something called a celebrity attachment workshop at his home with a celebrity named Christy Frank who was a finalist on season one of Donald Trump's hit new television show, The Apprentice. 
I think it was in its sixth year of airing at the time, and it was still relatively hot new hit TV series. And something about that product that he offered that day, which consisted of a full day mastermind at his house and photos with himself and Christy Frank. Finalist on hit NBC television series, The Apprentice. And endorsements of your book by him and her really appealed to me. And I took him up on the offer and I went to his home in Henderson, Nevada and did that one day training, which was really one of the found, one of the transformational moments of my life because today celebrity attachment marketing is one of my favorite aspects of entrepreneurial marketing. I love that technique where you are in photos with celebrities. It's my favorite technique and it's really one of the big benefits that you get if you come to my upcoming event at Carnegie Hall, the living legends of entrepreneurial marketing with Martha Stewart, Ice-T and Coco, Jerry Greenfield, Dan Kennedy, Michael Gerber. They're all gonna be there and if you're a VIP or an elite ticket holder at that event, you get photos with all of those celebrities so that you get those celebrity attachment marketing assets. And I tell you what, when you're in a crowded marketplace, and people are comparing you to your competitor down the street who provides the same kinds of legal services, the same kinds of insurance services, the same kinds of financial services, whatever you do, you probably have competitors in your local area. And if you appear to be a celebrity and they don't, then you are gonna get a much bigger piece of the pie. There has been research that states that the number one competitor in a marketplace gets 50% of the pie. The number two competitor in the marketplace gets 25% of the pie. The number three through infinity competitors in the marketplace split the rest of that 25%. And if you're wondering why you only get the crumbs, that's because you're most likely in that last section of the pie, sharing it with everybody. A great example of how this works would be, of course, Tony Robbins, whose seminar, Date with Destiny, by my calculations, accounts for 10% of the entire personal development self-help seminar industry. And that's just one of his products. He is a king of entrepreneurial marketing. When you talk about Tony Robbins to his customers and prospects, he is a god and to the rest of the world, he's absolutely nobody. Most people don't know who he is, that's why his NBC television show a few years ago called Breakthrough went on and off the air in only six episodes. And somebody was asking me recently, Clint, why don't you have your own TV show? And I said, I don't wanna be like Tony Robbins. I don't want my TV show to come and go in a blip, I understand that unless you're actually really, truly famous, like Ice-T and Coco, like Martha Stewart, like Snoop, unless you're actually somebody who's actually really, truly famous in the world, which is different than being a celebrity, you cannot have a hit television show because people only want watch shows about famous people for the most part. Of course, there are always exceptions to every rule, but for the most part, And I don't want to be a blip when I have my TV show on a network. I want to be a breakout success like the Kardashians, like Donald Trump. So I'm in no rush to do it. First, I want to build my radio show, the greatest show of all time on WABC Radio in New York City. Into a huge national success as a syndicated program. And then I'm going to take that nationally syndicated radio show and take that onto the network television airwaves to break through. That's the plan in case you're wondering. But let's get back to this project at hand, which is writing this book about the living legends of marketing, 
excuse me, of entrepreneurial marketing and making it a bestseller today in a day, one day. That's what I'm doing. All in one day. And by the end of today, it's gonna be live on Amazon.com and I want you to buy it. Whoever's watching this video, please go to Amazon.com right now if you're watching it and buy this book, Entrepreneurial Marketing. Martha Stewart, Ice Tea and Coco, Jerry Greenfield, from Ben and Jerry's, Dan Kennedy, Michael Gerber, etc. Buy the book and check it out how I've transformed this Facebook Live. To my knowledge, for the very first time, no one's ever done this, I'm gonna transform this Facebook Live into a best-selling book. And by the way, inside the book is gonna be a coupon code for you that's gonna give you $1,000 discount to come and see the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing at Carnegie Hall with me on September 26, 7, and 8. That's right. You're going to buy this book on Amazon for $1.99. That's the price you have to set as a minimum. Otherwise, I would have made it $0.99, cents, but you can't anymore. Buy this book for $0.99, cents, and then that $0.99 cent investment will transform into a $1,000 coupon code for you to get a discount off the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing event at Carnegie Hall with all those celebrities. So that means you could become a person who gets the photos of all of those celebrities, Martha Stewart, Ice-T and Coco, Jerry Greenfield, Dan Kennedy, Michael Gerber, Walter O'Brien, everybody, Princess Marianne Parker, you'll get them all for as little as $1,999 as a VIP and be my guest and Enjoy my hospitality as a VIP and I have the best hospitality and I'm turning into the king of New York City and you will definitely have an amazing experience with me at Carnegie Hall and the restaurants that are attached to this event and on the celebratory boat, dinner cruise, sightseeing, networking adventure on Saturday night, the closing night. I started employing celebrity attachment marketing as soon as I learned about it. I had, coincidentally, a number of photos with people and I put them on my website and I started to build my celebrity attachment marketing assets. It wasn't the only thing I did, but in my continuing thirst for knowledge and education, and I, and I think that my wife appreciates the fact that part of what makes me successful, part of what allows me to come up with money-making idea after idea after idea and project after project after project, like my various events at the Harvard Faculty Club or at NASDAQ or at West Point or Mercedes, or Coca-Cola, all of these things that I've been doing, and now culminating in my Carnegie Hall spectacular. All of this stuff was propelled forward like a turbocharger because of my education. I have always been a great student. I told you how I went to Stuyvesant High School. Those of you who don't know, Stuyvesant High School is a math, science, specialized high school in New York City's public school system. You have to take an entrance examination to get in and only la creme de la creme, that's the French portion of this broadcast, are accepted. My parents got me a tutor for that exam. When I was 12 years old, I started studying for the Stuyvesant High School entrance exam with a tutor who happened to be the head of the biology department at Stuyvesant High School. Mr. Linder, short little bald haired man who taught me all the basics that I wasn't learning on my own in the New York City public school system that I had been going to. He taught me about multiplication and division and fractions, problem solving strategies and techniques, vocabulary. He really was my first hardcore mentor and tutor, Mr. Linder. And I'm forever indebted, indebted to him because he's the one 
who prepared me to take the Stuyvesant entrance exam and get in. And getting into Stuyvesant shaped my whole future. Because it was while I was at Stuyvesant that I read about the Wharton Business School. And here I had just gotten into the best high school in New York City. The only competitive exam I had ever really taken, I aced it. And I said to myself, well, if I could do that, why can't I go to the best business school in the world, the Wharton Business School, and become somebody special and make my dreams come true? And that's exactly what I did. But while I was studying with James Malinchak, I ended up taking four of his seminars over the, over the next couple of years. I kept hearing him talk about Dan Kennedy and not long after I heard the name, I started doing the research. Who is this guy, Dan Kennedy? What's he all about? The first time I went to see Dan Kennedy, I paid $2,500 for a ticket to attend his super conference. I flew to Nashville, Tennessee and took a taxi out to the Opryland Hotel and sat in a ballroom with 1,500 people watching Dan Kennedy talk about how he had spoken in the arenas with Colin Powell and General Schwarzkopf and George H.W. Bush and Barbara Bush and Donald Trump. And he was one of only two speakers who was on that whole entire Peter Lowe success seminar tour and circuit for nine years. By the way, that in itself is the use of a form of celebrity attachment. That would be celebrity attachment storytelling technique that I just did there. Where you tell stories about yourself with major celebrities. And I started buying Dan Kennedy books and products. He has many, many, many books under his No BS Business book series. No BS Business, No BS Marketing to the Affluent being my favorite of all of them. Because really that's all I'm interested in doing is marketing to affluent clientele. I want wealthy people to think that I am worthy of spending lots of money on my stuff. I prefer to call it investing, but for the average viewer, people are spending money on your products and services. And the people I want spending money on my products and services are affluent clientele because they have the money to buy your stuff. And that was one of Dan Kennedy's first big lessons that I learned Who is more important than what? Who has the money to pay you what you want to earn? And once you've determined who has the money, then you can decide what you want to sell to them. That's a foundational lesson of Dan Kennedy. And now I'm going to change hands here. My arm is tired. There we go. I have since gone on to travel to the hinterlands of this great nation in search of further education and enlightenment at the feet of the great master, the professor of harsh reality, Mr. No BS himself, Dan Kennedy. I have followed him around everywhere and seen him everywhere. And I think that's one of the things that has endeared me to him so much and has enabled me to earn the lofty positioning as being his info marketer of the year. 
<laughs> a title which I proudly bear to this very day as no one has succeeded me as the GKIC Infomarketer of the Year. I continue to reign strong in that position. No one has been able to touch me in six years since I won that competition. In fact, recently I was on a phone call with his assistant of 29 years, the delightful, charming, and super smart Vicky from Phoenix, Arizona. And she said, Clint, you've been following Dan around this country like Velcro. <laughs> I have. Because the first great takeaway you need to take from this video or from this best-selling book, if you're reading it, however you're consuming this content, the first great takeaway is go directly to the source, study with the masters themselves, when you have an opportunity to study with a living legend, go do it. That's what I do every single time. That's not to say I, I won't study with the disciples too. A lot of times the disciple will have a lot to offer. But if I can get to the living legend themselves, why shouldn't I do that? I'll tell you what, I learned a lot from James Malinchak, but I have learned a million times more from Mr. Dan Kennedy himself because he was the fountainhead of the wisdom. That's why I'm bringing him to Carnegie Hall. In 2013, I started producing a live event called Celebrity Launchpad where I teach my students how to book themselves on local TV news and talk shows and which has resulted in my clients, students, many of whom become my friends, booking themselves on more than 4,559 television appearances with ABC, NBC, CBS and Fox that I'm aware of so far. That's what won me the GKIC Info Marketer of the Year Award. The success of the program and the money that I've made doing it. And it's been significant, life-changing for me and for all of the people who were wise enough to invest in it and take their careers to the next level as celebrities on TV, news, and talk shows. And if you want to be a celebrity in this world, you got to be on TV. And over the course of these years, bringing this into reality, my goal that I have shared with my wife, our mission is to create a community of celebrity entrepreneurs. Because we believe that the rising tide lifts all ships and the more celebrities we're friends with, the more celebrities we're hanging out with, the more successful our students and friends become, the more successful we will be. This is our sincere belief and our guiding light. And in the spirit of wanting to take my community to the next level, yes, that's probably you. If you're watching this video, there's a high chance you're part of my community or soon will be and definitely should be, if you, especially if you made it this far. In that spirit, I have put together a single conference which incorporates many of my greatest mentors, allowing you, my friends, to come to the source and hear the original genius come out of the mouths of the original geniuses. A lot of my clients value the fact that I've spent so much time and money 
studying with these people and synthesizing it into my theory of celebrity entrepreneurship, my various methodologies of entrepreneurial marketing. And it's smart to use me to synthesize all that stuff. But you know what's really, really smart? Do that and come see the real people who I learned this stuff from. Explain it to you in their own words, Lucy. You got some explaining to do and let them explain it to you. And right below these words right here is a coupon code. Yep, here it is, the coupon for you to go to the livinglegends2019.com website and save $1,000 off your ticket to hear the greats teach you the greatness them own selves. To learn from the masters, to be mentored by the living legends. Among which Dan Kennedy is only one of many. The next living legend I want to talk about is Chapter two of this book, Michael E. Gerber. Michael E. Gerber is the genius who came up with the concept. Are you really the owner of a business or are you just the owner of a job? There's a lot of entrepreneurs out there who think they, earn, they own a business, but really they don't. They just own their own job. That's the e-myth. thinking that you're an entrepreneur when really you're just an underpaid, overworked technician. Advancing on that concept some more, he then asks you the question, are you working in your business or are you working on your business? And for anybody who says, oh, well, I'd like to go to the Living Legends Conference and study with all these living legends, but I can't do it because I'm too busy working, you need to be there. That's by definition, working in your business instead of on it. That's the problem. I first met Michael Gerber at a speakers, authors, networking group event in Beverly Hills. Of course, I had seen him on many photographs and videos on the internet and he always wore that hat that he wears. And I wanted to know what was the significance of that hat because to me, it seemed like a costume. Another one of my favorite marketing strategies and techniques is the use of costume in marketing. Anytime you see me speak at a conference or major event, I will be wearing a blue suit, a white shirt, and a neon pink solid color tie. I call that my celebrity entrepreneur costume. And I was wondering if his hat was a costume device that he was using. So I asked him the question. He went into the full story and explanation behind the use of that hat. That's a whole separate YouTube video that you can watch. I'll put the link in here. At the end of this book, there will be a link in the bibliography for further study. And he was kind enough to offer me that explanation on video and it's been a great one of the many, many hundreds of videos that I've published on YouTube over the years. When you do any kind of research about what is the book that changed your career as an entrepreneur, you will be shocked at how many people say it was the e-myth. Good, Google it. 
What book changed your career as an entrepreneur? The E-Myth is gonna pop up everywhere. That is, for most small business owners, a key turning point in their career is discovering the E-Myth book by Michael Gerber and figuring out where they are in their career. Is their business in its infancy, in its adolescence, or maturity? And then how to take it from maturity and beyond. How to go from working in your business to working on your business. And what is working on your business? If you believe like I do, that you are not a plumber, you're in the business of selling and marketing your plumbing services, then you realize that working on your business is working on your marketing. As I say, the marketing of what you do is 100 times more important than what you actually do. This is one of the seminal concepts of Michael Gerber, getting out of working in your business and working on it. And he will be talking about this and his next evolution, which is what is missing? Really ask yourself the question, what is missing in your life? And your life is a metaphor for everything. He will be doing multiple sessions at my event at Carnegie Hall. And no, this event is not a pitch fest. This event is first and foremost, your opportunity to get the real truth about how to thrive as an entrepreneur direct from the mouths of the living legends. So be smart, take your coupon code and go to livinglegends2019.com and buy your ticket now. For those of you who are watching the video and haven't got the book yet, go get the book tonight. I'm gonna make this book a bestseller. I'm gonna create the whole book straight off of this Facebook Live feed. I will publish it by tonight. It will be an example of the power of the miracle morning, which I will talk about later on. And I want you to make it a bestseller. Buy it. It'll be $1.99 and it will save you a thousand off the ticket to see the living legends and it will make you millions if you implement the strategies that I'm talking about here today. Chapter three, Martha Stewart. Man, oh man, oh man. You want to talk about entrepreneurial marketing and Perhaps the greatest living legend that we have in America today. All you have to do is Google the name Martha Stewart. This woman transformed herself into a global celebrity superstar brand just by doing things that basically any housewife does. making food, decorating, doing crafts, whatever women enjoy doing around the home, that's what she does. And she has transformed her knowledge and skills and talents and flair for entrepreneurial marketing into making her name a household name, making her face known and loved by most people in the United States. You ask anybody, do you like Martha Stewart? They will say, yeah, that's pretty good. Many people are aware that Martha Stewart ran into some difficulties with the law a few years ago and paid a heavy price going to the penitentiary and everybody thought she'd just be doing yoga and getting her nails done for a few months, but she actually did some time. 
real hard time in the population at the prison. And then she came back from that all better and stronger than ever. And she built her personal brand and her corporation, Martha Stewart Omni Media, into a company which she then sold to a major conglomerate. And now she's on the board of directors of that company and is almost a billionaire. How the hell do you do that? How do you go from being a pariah of society behind bars to being a director of a major corporation to which you just sold your giant omni media company. How do you do that? I'll tell you how you do that. Entrepreneurial marketing. That's right, entrepreneurial marketing. And the theme of my conference at Carnegie Hall I hope you enjoyed I hope you enjoyed the uh, the walk on the beach. I, I think I got a little bit too much sun actually. That's why I came back and do the rest of this in the shade. The theme of my conference at Carnegie Hall is how to thrive as an entrepreneur. I've asked and I will ask in front of the whole audience, how do you thrive as an entrepreneur? What would you tell your kid if they came to you on your deathbed? Ugh. Oh, that feels good to sit down. If your kid came to you on your deathbed and said, Grandma, Martha Stewart. If you're in, the, in this case, if her grandchild came to her on, on her deathbed, Grandma, Martha Stewart, what do I really need to do to thrive as an entrepreneur? What would you really tell that little kid? And I'll tell you what, Dan Kennedy is excited by this. He's actually bringing his wife and his daughter and grandson to this event at Carnegie Hall because he's so excited about what he's going to be bringing to the conference and what all the rest of these living legends are going to be bringing to this conference. And he wants his grandchild to get this knowledge. That's what I'm talking about. Because I'm telling you the difference between man and apes is knowledge. The difference between the super successful and the mediocre is knowledge. The difference between having mucho dinero and poquito dinero, that's the Spanish section of this broadcast and book, is knowledge. And by the way, Gay Montgomery, I am going to be transforming this Facebook Live into a best-selling book live on Amazon by the end of today. By midnight tonight, it'll be live on Amazon. I will have uploaded it to Amazon. Then they're going to have to do their thing. By midnight tonight, I'm uploading this book to Amazon and it will be a bestseller. I'm going to start selling it as a, as a pre-sale and I want you to buy it for $1.99. It will contain a $1,000 coupon code for the living legends. Get it. Ugh. This is why I've invited Martha Stewart to come because I adore her as a talent. I enjoy watching her on TV, especially her new show with Snoop Dogg. I enjoy and respect her creativity. The publisher of 94 best-selling books is Martha Stewart, author of 94 best-selling books. I admire her creativity and skill as a creator and an entrepreneur. And most of all, I have the utmost respect for her ability to transform her life and turn it around from being behind bars to the top of the heap. And I want to know from her own mouth, what does it really take to thrive as an entrepreneur? Chapter four, cocoa and iced tea. I first became a fan of cocoa and iced tea when I started seeing cocoa popping up on my Instagram feed. Now, 
God bless Coco. <laughs> God bless her. There are certain aspects of Coco that resemble my beloved soulmate and wife, my co-conspirator and entrepreneurial partner in this adventure, my beloved wife, Allison Savage. They both share certain attributes, shall we say, which distinguish them amongst the masses. And Coco kept popping up in my feed. And every time I would mention Coco to my wife, or every time I would show her pictures of Coco, she would always get excited. This is an essential lesson of entrepreneurial marketing, all right? Your clientele need to be excited to buy your stuff. And the only thing that makes people ex excited to buy your stuff is because they think that you're somebody special. Being somebody special can happen in a variety of ways, but the easiest, fastest, most surefire, and most powerful way to be somebody special is to be famous. And Coco fits that bill as the star of two reality series that she starred in with her husband, Ice-T, who, by the way, produced those reality series for network television. Think about that. He not only starred in the reality series, but he was also the producer of the reality series. Go over here. Let's see if I can transform this a little bit. Ah, yes, this is looking much better. Go up here. Take this guy's chair, bring it where I want it, put it over here, do what I want to do. Mm. That was the part that really astounded me is every time I would show my wife something about Coco, my wife would get super excited and I remember one time. I saw a post that Coco made about being at the Playboy Club in New York City. And it seemed like it was a fresh post. And I said to my wife, hey, let's go to the Playboy Club and meet them. And man, was she all excited to go there. Luckily, I called the Playboy Club and I found out that even though they just posted the photos, they weren't there, they had been there the night before for the birthday party that they had attended. But every time I would tell her about Ice-T and Coco, man, she would get all excited. Fast forward to the living legends of entrepreneurial marketing, and here's the real behind the scenes of how this event came together. Unfortunately, it's very hard to find women. It is very hard to find women who are somebody who are speakers who are somebody special in the public's eye who can show up at an event and be a speaker or who are willing to show up and be a speaker and i contacted coco and ice tea through instagram and began a conversation with them i'm i'm pretty successful on instagram myself i have a quite a quite a good number of followers and I think that's part of the reason why she opened up the dialogue and ultimately I paid them a lot of money, which I was excited to do. See, I'm paying Ice-T and Coco a lot of money. Most people don't make this amount of money in a full year and they're gonna earn it in two hours. And I'm excited to do it because of who they are. That's the essence of entrepreneurial marketing is that people will pay you more for who you are than for what you actually do or sell. In their case, what are they gonna do? They're gonna just show up for two hours. That's basically what I bought, them showing up for two hours at Carnegie Hall in New York City. Because of who they are. If you don't know Icy and Coco, here's the shorthand version. 
in addition to starring in their two different reality series together he produced those reality series he is also gone his story is fascinating he's gone from being a grunt in the u.s army to being a gangsta to being a famous gangsta rapper evolving into a grammy award-winning recording artist and producer of music television and films his documentary films include a documentary on Iceberg Slim and a documentary called Something From Nothing. And that is really what entrepreneurial marketing is all about. How do you make something out of nothing? That's what this book is about. I'm taking nothing. This is time that I would have spent sleeping and I decided instead of sleeping, I was gonna get up, do this Facebook Live and make this book and make something out of nothing. That's the miracle that I'm doing this morning. Thank you, Hal Elrod. And I'll talk about Hal Elrod later on in this book very soon, as a matter of fact. And then, in addition to all of that, Ice-T has been starring in a network television series as a detective sergeant for going on 20 years. Talk about consistency, talk about reliability, talk about maintaining standards of quality 20 years as a recurring star on a network television series hit that's what ice t has done all while doing all those other things too and i think that's a lot to do with success as an entrepreneurial marketer early on in my career ah, it was it was before my career early on in my life when i was 19 years old my roommate in college was a young man named evan copelson and his father was a producer in hollywood that you probably have never heard of his name was arnold copelson you know you probably don't know his name do you probably not but you probably saw his movie porkies which was the number five highest grossing movie of 1982. You probably saw that movie. And then you probably saw some of his subsequent films. The next one was a little movie called Platoon. Yeah, you probably saw that. After that, you probably saw his movie with Michael Douglas, Falling Down. Yeah, you probably saw that. After that, you probably saw his movie with Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones called Fugitive. Yeah, he produced that. After that, you probably saw The Devil's Advocate with Keanu Reeves and Al Pacino. You know those guys? Yeah, you've heard of them. After that, you probably saw Wesley Snipes and Murder at 1600. And the peak of his career was he produced a $100 million movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger for a major studio. The film was called Eraser. And at the time, Arnold Schwarzenegger was the number one top highest paid movie star in Hollywood. And Arnold Copelson had become the king of Hollywood. That's right, the man whose name you never knew before this became the king of Hollywood. all using entrepreneurial marketing techniques that I talk about and scientifically examine in my new book, Celebrity Entrepreneurship, which by the way, you get as part of the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing package. You don't just get a ticket to the live event. You get a whole package of amazing, transformational educational materials. I've put everything I, I could muster into this offer that made sense, including my book, celebrity entrepreneurship and five training videos on celebrity entrepreneurship and how you can do it too. And when I was just a little kid, 19 years old, I met Arnold Copelson for the first time and he told me, you got to have 10 balls in the air at all times. You know, you got to be juggling. You got to keep 10 balls in the air because you know, something's going to hit here and then the other things are going to hit down the road. But if you keep a lot of balls in the air, you'll always have something going on. That's part of entrepreneurial marketing. I gotta tell you, the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing is going to be dedicated to Arnold Copelson. 
he was on my original list of living legends that I wanted to have come and speak at this conference and unfortunately he passed away in October of 2018. And I'm eternally grateful to the man for his inspiration. Really, the inspiration of Arnold Copelson and the example that he set, which I never understood until many years later. In fact, only in October did I understand that my whole career has been guided by his example. And it was his inspiration that prompted me on my 13 year dream to achieve the Hollywood dream stardom, fame, celebrity, Academy Awards, none of which I got. But they put me on a path to become the man that I am today. They, they gave me the hard knocks of life that I needed to learn to really appreciate what I have today and to really learn the lessons that have propelled me to my success because I've been so desperate to never want to go back behind the wheel of a cab. That's what drives me to work so hard in the beginning years, fear that if I didn't learn everything I possibly could that I'd be back behind the wheel of a cab. And I never want that for me or for anybody in my community, for any of my friends. And I promise you, if you do this stuff, if you appreciate and implement these celebrity entrepreneurship marketing techniques that I'm going to teach you and that the living legends, my best mentors, will teach you themselves out of their own mouths at the Living Legends event, you'll never be behind the wheel of a cab. You will be thriving as an entrepreneur. That's what this is really all about. That's what I have right now and that's what you're going to have too. He said, you always got to have 10 balls in the air. It seems to me that that's been Ice T's modus operandi. Guy's got a lot of projects going on. I got nothing but respect for him and his beautiful, charming, sexy, pinup girl wife, Coco. And I'm excited to pay them a ton of money. I am. Because of who they are. And I'm excited to share them with you. And if you're smart, you'll take the $1,000 coupon and buy yourself the VIP upgrade and get the photos with Ice-T and Coco and Martha Stewart and Jerry Greenfield and Dan Kennedy and Michael E. Gerber and Walter O'Brien and Dylan Howard, the editor-in-chief of the National Enquirer, all of them at the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing, livinglegends2019.com. Chapter five, Jerry Greenfield. Better known as Jerry from Ben & Jerry's. Yeah, that's right. The founder of Ben & Jerry's, he took cream and sugar and transformed it. Into a household brand. Ben & Jerry's ice cream, which a few years ago, they sold that company to Unilever Brands, a major international conglomerate for hundreds of millions of dollars. That's what I call the American dream. That's what I call the power of entrepreneurial marketing because this was just two guys who started making ice cream in a, in a converted gas station in Vermont. And boom, it's everywhere in every supermarket, in every 7-Eleven, convenience store, Circle K, it, Target, it's everywhere. Ben & Jerry's ice cream, everybody loves it. That's entrepreneurial marketing. Now, personally, I believe that who you are is more important than what you actually do or sell because I have a basic assumption that they taught me at the Wharton Business School that I wrote about in my first best-selling book, What They Teach You at the Wharton Business School, which if you haven't read it, if you invest in the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing, you'll get the audiobook for what they teach you at the Wharton Business School as part of the package. And I love that audiobook. Creating that audiobook really helped me to prepare myself to launch 
my new radio show on WABC Radio in New York City, the greatest show of all time. People say I have a great voice for radio. Creating that audiobook was a big part of developing the vocal talents and power and skill that I have. Creating that audiobook. I love that audiobook to this day. You know how often you'll hear your own voice on a recording and you won't like it? Not me. I generally like my voice. And a lot of it is due to the fact that I did that audiobook, what they teach you at the Wharton Business School. And one of the foundational lessons of the Wharton Business School is that everybody needs to have a high quality product. If you don't have a high quality product, you're not going to you're not going to succeed. The lesson of the Wharton Business School is that your product should be high price, high quality. That's one of the big big lessons that I learned from Wharton Business School. A product should be designed to be high price and high quality. And an underlying subtopic of that is that you should have a high quality product. If your product should be high price, high quality, that means it should be high quality, which means anybody who's successful in business has a high quality product, my friends. That's the reality of the competition that you have in this world. Everybody has a high quality product or else they're not in business. If you don't have a high quality product, you are out of business. Only if you have a high quality product, you have any chance of staying in business. As high quality as Ben and Jerry's ice cream is, and it is, it's delicious, it's amazing. I believe the power of the Ben and Jerry's brand is Ben and Jerry. The power of the Ben and Jerry's brand is that you felt like you had a connection with the entrepreneurs who were creating Ben and Jerry's homemade ice cream. That was the name of the company. And those two guys mixed it up, moshed it up, froze it up, packaged it up, marketed it up, and sold it to you and me, and ultimately Unilever. And isn't that the American dream? Isn't that the entrepreneurial dream? To build a company, make it successful, make a lot of money, and then sell it to some giant company, and cash out, and live happily ever after. And that's what, exactly what those guys have done. That's legendary, my friends. Anybody who has a disagreeing opinion on that, you would be wrong, as Arnold Copelson used to say. That's the definition of a living legend. And that's why I wanna ask my question, what would it really take for to thrive as an entrepreneur in the opinion of Jerry Greenfield? The Jerry in Ben and Jerry's, I wanna know what he's gonna say. What would he tell his kid if he was dying and his kid said, Jerry, Grandpa Jerry, how do you thrive as an entrepreneur? He would say whatever he's going to say. Chapter 6, Dylan Howard. Amazingly enough, folks, I met Dylan Howard on LinkedIn. And I started sending him pitches and he ignored all the pitches. And I kept sending him pitches and he kept ignoring me. And then I sent him a proposal to be a speaker at the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing Conference at Carnegie Hall alongside Martha Stewart. And actually I didn't have Martha yet. Alongside Dan Kennedy and Michael Gerber and Steve Larson, I had him and I had Princess Marianne Parker and I had Jerry Greenfield confirmed at that point. And I said, Dylan Howard, I know that you're the editor-in-chief of the National Enquirer and us and OK and Men's Health Magazine and Soap Opera Digest, all of the publications for American Media Inc., a huge media conglomerate company. You're responsible for creating all that content. Would you be so kind as to come and share your wisdom about what it takes 
to stand out and thrive in competitive marketplaces because, hey man, he's competing on the supermarket shelves at the checkout stand, which is the most prime real estate in every supermarket. And he's been there and stays there week after week after week, month after month, in and out. He's always there with the National Enquirer and his other magazines because he knows how to produce content that stands out in the most competitive environment, the supermarket checkout stand. How do you do that? I think that could lend a lot of insights into how to thrive as an entrepreneur because ultimately success as an entrepreneur comes down to people being aware of you and your great product. Remember, you got to have a great product and people have to be aware of it and they have to want it. And he's been doing all of that with the National Enquirer and us and OK and all those other publications that he supervises and creates content for at American Media Inc. And amazingly enough, through the magic of social media and LinkedIn, I was able to connect with this mover and shaker in the New York City media scene and convince him to become one of our speakers. And I'm so excited and thrilled and honored that he'll be joining us at Carnegie Hall for the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing, September 26, seven and eight. And if you're smart, if you're a content creator of any, of any kind, and if you're on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram, you probably are a content creator. Don't you wanna know what the editor-in-chief of the National Enquirer is gonna share with the Living Legends audience at Carnegie Hall about how to thrive in the most competitive marketplaces, how to stand out and be seen and purchased in the most competitive environment, the supermarket checkout stand. How do you do that? I wanna know. That's why I hired him. That's why I'm paying him a lot of money to come and share his expertise and wisdom with us at the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing at Carnegie Hall. Chapter seven. Walter O'Brien. Oh yes, I had Walter O'Brien at that point when I enrolled Dylan Howard to come and speak. I already had the smartest man in the world. At age 13, he hacked into NASA. And if you watch the pilot episode of his CBS television series that ran for five years, and by the way, he just told me on the DL that he has another deal going through for another television series that he'll be producing. In the pilot episode of his series, Scorpion, on CBS TV that he produced for five years, the CIA comes to his little farmhouse in Ireland on military choppers and takes him away after he hacked into NASA. And he evolves into an elite problem solver for three-letter governmental agencies I don't know what happened, I'm picking it up from here. This is part two of my first ever best-selling book project, taking a Facebook Live and making it a best-selling book in one day. Picking up the story about Walter O'Brien and how he went from being a little kid, arrested by the CIA, taken away, and became an elite problem solver for three-letter government agencies and corporations with big money. The smartest man in the world, his IQ is 197. Einstein's IQ was only 160. Yeah, and I know that because I did some research on people who spoke at Carnegie Hall and Einstein was one of those people. Well, Walter O'Brien took his 197 IQ, the highest IQ of anybody and became a problem solver. His company motto at Scorpion is any funded need. If you have a need and you got money, they will fix it. Make it happen. He's got a whole team of elite problem solvers. And the five seasons of Scorpion that he produced was inspired by his real life experiences leading that team of elite problem solvers on missions around the world for people with lots of money and big needs. And he will be coming to the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing to tell some of those stories and share his wisdom. Imagine if you could pick the brain of the smartest man in the world. What would you find in there? What problems in your life and business could be solved? Just like that. If you could get inside the mind of the smartest man in the world. Well, you can if you come to the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing at Carnegie Hall, September 26, 7 and 8. He'll be doing hot seats. 
He's doing two sessions at this conference. One where I'm gonna ask him questions and talk to him and elicit stories from him and his answer about what do you really need to succeed. And in fact, I was talking to him in a preparatory phone call the other day and I told him about how I want him to share the secrets of what it takes to survive and thrive as an entrepreneur. And he goes, you know, Clint, I actually have an algorithm of success in life. Yes, one of my friends was came to me with his son and he wanted me to give the son some advice and I actually have a whole algorithm of what it takes to be successful in life. <laughs> and he's gonna share that at the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing. Yeah, how would you like to have the algorithm of success? That's what you're gonna get. I mean, the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing is gonna be the greatest conference of all time. That's for sure, no doubt the greatest entrepreneurial conference, but it's also gonna be a personal development and transformation experience. You're gonna go home, change different forever. You're gonna go home with the formula, the algorithm for how to live a successful life as determined scientifically by the smartest man in the world. If that's not worth a couple of ducats, I don't know what is. If you're smart, you'll use that coupon code right now and go to livinglegends2019.com and get your ticket and by the way, the coupon code is only available in the book, which I'm gonna to publish tonight. This Facebook Live will become a book which will be published on Amazon tonight. And if you take the coupon code and go to livinglegends2019.com and put the coupon code in, you get $1,000 off any ticket to the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing. Take that coupon code and come and learn all of the great things and if you're smart, while they're still available, I can't guarantee that they are because there's a limited amount of these VIP tickets where you get the photos with all of the celebrities. If you're smart, you'll get those photos and transform your whole marketing career by getting pictures of you hanging out at Carnegie Hall with Martha Stewart, with Ice-T and Coco, with Jerry from Ben & Jerry's, with Dan Kennedy, the great magnetic marketing originator, with Michael E. Gerber, the man who created the E-Myth best-selling book series, and with Walter O'Brien, the smartest man in the world, executive producer of five seasons of the CBS television show, Scorpion. I think that takes us to chapter seven, which would be Steve Larson. Oh my goodness, Steve Larson, my good friend. First of all, I am so impressed by Steve Larson as a speaker. You are gonna be blown away by that young man when he gets on the stage at Carnegie Hall. He's gonna be doing multiple sessions, teaching how to create offers that are designed to crush it, and how to use the secret sauce that only he knows from having built 500 plus funnels for Russell Brunson, the head guy at funnel at ClickFunnels. Could you imagine building 500 funnels? The secret sauce of funnel hacking success will be divulged by Steve Larson at the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing because Hey man, today online marketing is all about funnels. When you put your name and email address into a form and hit send or submit or give me the free report, whatever buttons you hit, when you do that, you have entered into a funnel. And Steve Larson has built more than 500 of them for the most successful funnel building, funnel marketing company in the world, Funnel Click Funnels. And their charismatic protege of Dan Kennedy Russell Brunson, who was previously a Dan Kennedy Marketer of the Year. See what I'm saying? And Steve Larson is not only a super genius when it comes to building offers that are irresistible, but also he's an amazing speaker. That's what attracted me into bringing him to this event. He's such a great speaker. Super smart and an amazing performer on stage. And I'm really excited he's actually contributed what he calls his core offer masterclass as part of the general admission package with the living legends of entrepreneurial marketing at Carnegie Hall. When you plunk down your few ducats to get a ticket to see the conference at Carnegie Hall, not only do you get that whole thing, but you also get all of the products in the packages attached to each ticket level. And in the basic general admission package, you get Steve Larson, your core offer masterclass training you on how to identify a market that's ready for you to market to it and who inside that market 
you should be marketing to, and then how to build an offer that is going to crush it for you inside that marketplace and to that target market. Therefore, if you get it in the general admission package, you get it in the VIP package, you get it in the elite package, you get it in any package that you invest in when you decide wisely to come to the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing at Carnegie Hall, September 26, 7, and 8 in New York City. Go to livinglegends2019.com right now and get your ticket. Chapter 8. Princess Marianne Parker. Her Royal Highness, Princess Marianne Parker, came to me several years ago and I could barely understand a word she was saying. She enrolled in my Celebrity Launchpad program 10 months before her scheduled Celebrity Launchpad. And I remember having a long conversation with her and saying, look, in these next 10 months, you need to be doing work on your accent because it is too hard to understand what you're saying. You need to learn how to speak English in a way that people can understand you. And I set out a program for her to follow to transform herself. And unfortunately, when her celebrity launchpad came along, she still wasn't good enough. And I said, Marianne, I still can't understand what you're saying. And for the first time ever, I'm not letting somebody come to celebrity launchpad. I said, you're not allowed to come to celebrity launchpad until I can understand you. You need work on your accent and you need to be a better speaker. And you need to come to some of my speaker training. And the first place I had her come and train with me and speak was at West Point in 2016. And Princess Mary Ann Parker was one of those very privileged few individuals who were able to be with me on the campus of the US Military Academy in 2016 when we pulled off the impossible and we did our Leadership Speakers Academy at West Point, despite the fact that the military said, no, you cannot do it. I, I remember talking to the Colonel, he said, I'm sorry, Clint, I know this is gonna be hard for you, but there's just no way I'm gonna let this happen. <laughs> uh, well, it happened. And Marianne Parker was there, oh my God. And Marianne Parker has done a lot of stuff with us. She came to Celebrity Launchpad ultimately. She's been to Harvard two times. She's been, she's spoken at all different places with me and trained with me all over the world. And she's followed my advice and she has evolved into the princess of etiquette. Her Royal Highness herself, Princess Marianne Parker. And under my guidance and tutelage, she's actually become the world's top luxury etiquette expert. Now she does events and experiences with McLaren and Bentley and Rolls Royce and Lamborghini, delivering etiquette training and experiences to the elite big money people who are buying these luxury items and who want training from the best on how to not make mistakes under the most important circumstances. When you're hobnobbing and rubbing shoulders and breaking bread and sipping tea with royalty like Princess Mary Ann Parker. And I'm so excited that I added her into this lineup because her story is amazing and you're gonna hear it from her own mouth and you're gonna learn from her things that saved her life, how etiquette saved her life and the lives of her children and how it has propelled her and can propel you to much higher levels in your career and in your life that will be live on the stage with all the other living legends of entrepreneurial marketing at Carnegie Hall and you can only get your tickets at livinglegends2019.com. Get yours now. Chapter nine, I think. I don't know, I'm making this book up as I go. I'm coming to the end, it's been really fun. I'm so glad I decided to make this happen this morning instead of sleeping. <laughs> How much better it's been to make this book happen instead of sleeping. Jesus. Not last and not least is Hal Elrod. I've been talking about the miracle morning all morning. I've been making a miracle this morning, creating this first ever book from a Facebook Live project, which will be published on Amazon this evening. That's, that's the miracle of this book. I'm gonna take this whole Facebook Live, turn it into a book, 
and publish it onto Facebook, onto Amazon as a Kindle book tonight. And when you see the book on Amazon, please buy the book for $1.99 because inside the book will be a coupon code worth $1,000 off your ticket to see The Living Legends. And not last and not least of which is Hal Elrod. He's one of my great success stories. He came to me in 2013, signed up for Celebrity Launchpad 3, and the next day he called me back and said, you know, Clint, as much as I want to do this, my wife and I realize we just can't afford it. And I said, that's where you're wrong, Hal, because we're gonna make it possible for you to afford it. You're coming to Celebrity Launchpad. Your book, Miracle Morning, needs to get out there and you need to be on TV because that's where all the movers and shakers are. And I want you to have the power of television and I want you to take your career to the next level. All celebrities are on TV. You need to be on TV to make your book a success. And here we are, six years later, 1.5 million copies later. Hello, 1.5 million. That's a self-publishing phenomenon, yes especially with a royalty of $8 per book that he told me he has. If you watch his case study on guaranteedcelebrity.com, you can see him say it with his own mouth. My royalties are $8 a book. And Hal Elrod is gonna be joining us at Carnegie Hall. It's my great privilege to have purchased a copy for every single person who comes to the Living Legends event. If you come to the Living Legends, you're getting not just the Miracle uh, the Miracle Equation, his exact formula for how to make miracles come true in your life every day, but you'll also get a whole suite of products designed to support the implementation of the Miracle Equation and the realization of your dreams, making your most important mission your reality on Earth. You get that as part of the general admission VIP and elite packages with the Living Legends tickets. And I'm so excited to have him share the stage with me and all these other living legends at Carnegie Hall on September 26, 7, and 8. Go to livinglegends2019.com and get your ticket now. Chapter 10, me, hello, hello, hello. Last summer, when I was weighing the pros and cons of doing this event, I was doing a program with some of my students called the Income Doubler. I was in the process of repro reprogramming my subconscious mind to believe that I deserve to earn twice as much money. That's the Income Doubler. And the realization I came to was that you cannot get a diamond without pressure. And I decided to step up for this once in a lifetime experience at Carnegie Hall because I wanted to increase the pressure in my life. And you know what, it worked. I am feeling a whole lot more pressure trying to fill up 600 seats. The tickets are going fast, but there are quite a few remaining, especially the general admission. I mean, the VIP tickets are really going. Because why? People want high quality products. They want, and the elites are going fast too. People want high price, high quality, especially in this day and age when there is more money than time and people want the best experiences they can get. They are snapping up the VIP tickets to this super high quality event. And it's very gratifying for this event to be already so successful as it is. We're almost at break even and we've only been marketing it for about three weeks. But I wanted the pressure. I believe sincerely that if you want to become a diamond, and I do, I want to become a great, big, dazzling, brilliant, spectacular diamond. And I know that in order to get that, you need to have a lot of pressure in your life. And that's why I stepped up for this event at Carnegie Hall. And at this Carnegie Hall Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing event, I am going to divulge my most powerful lessons that I've learned over the course of my pretty spectacular career in the experts industry, running seminars and creating a community of celebrity entrepreneurs who are making their dreams come true. 
I call it celebrity entrepreneurship. And there are five elements of my formula. You can get them in my book for a hundred bucks. It's available right on Amazon right now. But why do that? When for only a few more ducats than that, you can get a ticket to come to the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing event at Carnegie Hall and get the book and the ebook. And if you get the VIP package, you get all kinds of training videos on the celebrity entrepreneurship formula. Live videos that I created with my highest level clients, clients who are paying me $25,000 and $30,000. That's what you gotta pay to learn the celebrity entrepreneurship formula up until now. But if you wisely invest in this package of a general admission ticket or a VIP ticket or an elite ticket to come and learn from the living legends of entrepreneurial marketing, you get all those videos and the books and more. That's what's available. I put my whole life into this celebrity entrepreneurship project. It really is. I put my whole life in the book and in the videos and into celebrity entrepreneurship of which the living legends of entrepreneurial marketing at Carnegie Hall is an offshoot. That's right. This whole project has come out of celebrity entrepreneurship because I believe the basic tenet of celebrity entrepreneurship is who you are is more important than what you actually do or sell. And part of celebrity entrepreneurship is hanging out with major celebrities. That's why I brought in Martha Stewart and Ice-T and Coco and Jerry from Ben and & Jerry's and Dan Kennedy and Michael Gerber and all of these living legends of entrepreneurial marketing because who you are is more important than what you actually do or sell and I want to be with those people. And then where you speak is one of the most powerful underrated concepts that people don't know and use and I do all the time and I wanted to speak at Carnegie Hall. I wanted to do an event at Carnegie Hall, the highest status venue in the world. And if you want to be with me for this once in a lifetime experience, if you want to witness it with your own eyes, there's not going to be an info product of it. There's not going to be videos and recordings of this. It's not going to happen. Why not? Because Carnegie Hall charges the license fee, which is a fortune to do that. That's why you don't see a lot of live at Carnegie Hall albums or, or movies because it costs too much money to make them. So if you want to get this, you got to show up. And really, I want you to show up because it's really the best way for you to learn. Like, you know, taking a, taking a course online is one thing, but learning from the masters themselves in person, hearing it from their own mouths and in the same room is a completely different experience and I want you to get that. So be smart and join me and all of these luminaries, these living legends of entrepreneurial marketing on September 26, 7 and 8 at Carnegie Hall in New York City for the living legends of entrepreneurial marketing, a once in a lifetime conference. Use the coupon code in this book to make it happen right now. You'll save $1,000. Click the link, livinglegends2019.com. And I'm looking forward to seeing you with me and Martha Stewart and Ice-T and Coco and Jerry from Ben & Jerry's and all the rest at the Living Legends of Entrepreneurial Marketing at Carnegie Hall.